This is Talking Mule Deer with your hosts, Steve Belinda and Jody Stemmler. Talking Mule Deer takes you on a journey to learn more about the Mule Deer Foundation, Mule Deer and black tailed Deer Biology and Management, tips and tactics for hunting, conservation issues, and even features some of our corporate and celebrity partners. Now, let's start talking Mule Deer. Hi, I'm Jody Stemmler. We're here with the MDF podcast from the Western Hunting and Conservation Expo. Hi, and I'm Steve Belinda, and today we got Chad and Marsha Shearer with us. We absolutely do. Chad, Marsha, how are you guys today? We are great. We're happy to be here. Thank you so much for coming to the sit down and talk with us a little bit. Now, you guys, um, you're Westerners. You grew up hunting. Tell us a little bit about your, you know, your access to hunting, where you grew up doing that, and, and then how you got to where you are today with your show. Yeah, I grew up in uh, Montana, just outside of Great Falls, and we currently live in a little town called Belt, up in the side of a mountain where we have mule deer that mow our yard for us. (laughs) And uh, They will do that. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it's just been so exciting for us. I grew up in mule deer country. The first deer I ever harvested was a mule deer and just fell in love with with hunting mule deer and had opportunities to uh, start guiding and then uh, got my outfitter's license and one thing led to the n- another and uh, started uh, outfitting and then I met my wonderful wife Marcia who isn't from Montana. No, no I'm originally from Tennessee. From Tennessee. Oh, from Tennessee. So wait a second, how did you meet though? We actually had some friends that thought we needed to hook up and meet each other. <laughs> oh, and friends. Well, they were smart. Oh, yeah. They yeah. Chad was coming down south on a turkey hunt, and our actually our second date was a turkey hunt. And less than four months later, I was in Montana in a hunting camp for three months and didn't quite know what I had got myself into. You looked at those mountains and said, oh, my gosh, yes. what's going on? I can't on? leave. <laughs> yes. But, you know, I was hunting for a husband, and now I hunt with <laughs> my husband. So There you go. I, our family was in the outdoors a lot with fishing and camping, but my dad didn't hunt, but both of my grandfathers did. Okay. So the hunting aspect was a little new to me when Chad and I got married, but I just was right along there beside it. And then after being a residence and in hunting camp for over a year, I got my Montana guide license, and I've had it for over 18 years wow, um, that's guiding. Great. So it's just, I'm very passionate about it. So, so do you guys, do you hunt in the little belts, the big belts, or all around the or state? all over the belts, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Between the that, belts. That, yeah. Uh, the high woods, Above the belt. <laughs> uh, eastern Montana. I, I spent some time at one time guiding out in the river breaks. And, and uh, just, that's the one thing I love about Montana is there's such a diversity. So many species you can hunt and uh, just enjoy and there's so much public land up there with over eight million acres it's just really an awesome state yeah and you know when uh, when you float the smith river you come right down through the belts there that's always uh, a great experience and you know i'm hoping to pick up another lottery tag to do that (laughs) again this year so i tell you what it's a great place to raise your family too we have two boys they're soon to be 16 and 17 and they have known nothing but hunting hunting camp and in the outdoors ever since. They were in hunting camp when they were two weeks old. Oh, that's great. So oh, wow. yeah. they, it's exciting to go with them and for them to be able to harvest their first. They put, both took their first deer um, in Texas when they were younger because of the different the age, age yeah. limit Yeah, the age limitation, yeah. And um, so they go everywhere we go, and we do it all together as a family. So it's just a, a great thing to do together, enjoying the outdoors. Now I would imagine through all of the hunting and filming you've done, you've experienced all sorts of stuff. Did I, Tell us about your most favorite hunt or something that's unusual, you know, that really reflects why you keep doing this. Or, you know, oftentimes it's those things where we don't harvest, which keeps us going. A lot of folks don't understand that. Yeah, I would have to say, of course, my first year was very memorable to me. That was just a special time with my dad. But then taking my wife out and her getting her first deer that was a special memory and then each one of my boys we got to marsh and i shared that together with them and to watch the excitement i still remember wyatt he was sitting on my lap he was he was five years old and i was helping him and i could just feel every muscle (laughs) in his body just tense up i mean just get like just hard as a rock and he squeezed that trigger and he was so excited oh, walker was so excited and we we've got to guide a lot of famous people per se we've got to guide a lot of uh, special people um there's so many memories it, it's hard to just say one. i think this year why don't you talk about chip that was probably oh. for for this year it was just amazing we were very fortunate um two years ago we met um chip madrin who's a a young man who's in his early 20s, and through Realtree organization, um, he is uh, 
we met him through their team and he was diagnosed with a brain tumor and brain cancer and through so much treatment and the brain stem cells and everything they had to do, um, he's confined to a wheelchair and he has very, very limited sight. Um, and so he came to Montana and took his first whitetail. Oh, and wow. we met him at um, SHOT Show actually and said, you know, Chip, we love your show. We love how you're passionate about the outdoors, but we want to know if you want to hunt mule deer. And his eyes just got so big <laughs> and he's like, are you serious? <sighs> and I said, yeah, we're serious. So we put in for this tag and in the, you know, it took the whole year to plan for it, put in for his license. And he came hunting this year. We had a, got a special permit because of the handicapped access. Yeah. Um, to, we had to go out for a trial run because we hadn't done anything like that, mm -hmm. you know, to know how it was going to work with his chair sure. and how to keep him comfortable and to keep his, you know, his health needs were very important. Absolutely. But we wanted it to make it fun for him and, of course, very successful. But um, he just enjoyed being out there. I but the, we felt the pressure because we, we wanted him to succeed, too. But uh, we put him in the back of the truck and the bo both of our boys were there. So we did it together all as a family. And he was so excited. The first night we went out, and he had a really hard time seeing the mule deer. Okay. It was a real low light. So we said, you know what, we've kind of tried it out. We kind of got the feel of what we're going to need to do. So the next day we went out, and um, the buck went right up kind of on the, on the rise where you could see a lot better what was in the clouds. And he, but he, all of a sudden he's like, I got him. And click, you heard that hammer come back, and you knew <laughs> he saw him. Yeah. And he dropped that mule deer, oh, and good for him. he was so excited. And, and, you know, we said, we can, we can drag him down here for you, we, but we want to do what you want to do. And he said, oh, no, I want to go to the deer. So Chad got him out of his chair and piggybacked him oh. and took him, you know. Oh, it, it was a awesome. pretty good haul straight up, but we got him up there. And then took some pictures and just really enjoyed the moment and thanked the Lord for the harvest that he gave us. And then one of our boys piggybacked him back down the mountain, which what made me nervous as a mom because I said, don't <laughs> drop him, you know. So it was just things like that, getting people in the outdoors for the first time or getting them in a new experience or someone that may have challenges, but you help them overcome that where they can still, you know, continue to do their passion. And well, it's amazing how much giving back like that means to those of us that have had the 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 health and the fortune to live the lives we've had in, exactly. in in the outdoors and the hunting. I know I'm you know my daughter's 13. She took her first deer in eastern Montana last year, her first mule deer, and you know I think I was more proud of that moment. And oh. you know she made a heck of a shot, and then she wanted to pull it out of the woods herself. Yeah. So she, I mean I helped her get up the hill a little bit, but she did it herself. And I know Jody, you're teaching your daughter how to hunt too, right? And it's just yeah. as parents, it's something. That, uh, you know, I, I guess you have to experience it to understand yes. it. Yep. So. And that's the one thing. Marcia and I do about 35 seminars a year. And we talk about getting the next generation involved. And I think there's some very important factors. Number one, we, we teach them why we hunt. And we enjoy the meat. I mean, Marcia's a great cook. And I, I love uh, the wild game. So we talk to them about the substance part of it. But then we also talk about how they need to practice and shoot. And don't expect your young person to get out there, give them a gun and say, shoot right now. You spend time at the range. You, you spend that time. Get them a gun that fits them. One thing that I really think is awesome, Montana made it legal to use suppressors on your firearms. That takes that loud sound out of it, but it also reduces the recoil, and that just makes it wonderful for those young people to stay on the scope. They can see that animal drop and... Uh, getting them the right gear. That's the same thing with getting ladies involved in the outdoors is making sure they have the right gear. And they right. might keep their hearing, too. Yes. Exactly. You know, I, I know I, my left ear, I don't hear very well out of it. Right, uh -huh. right. So now, Bergara is one of your sponsors, and, and you are pro staff for Bergara as well. And I was at a SHOT Show this year, and I will say that I shot 8 out of 9 on a 950-yard. And I am not a long-range shooter at all. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that right now. Yeah. That's not my thing necessarily. It was set up well, and I didn't have to make any adjustments. But that gun was dialed in and accurate right on the crosshairs. Eight out of nine times. It was impressive. So tell me a little bit about Bergara Rifles and, and your relationship with them. You know, Bergara Rifles is a great company. I've been with, with them for several years. I actually am a director of advertising and media relations with them. And it's really fortunate. It's a, it started with the barrels and making OEM barrels for several companies out there. In fact, if you listed 10 of some of the leading rifle manufacturers, probably about five of them would have our barrels on them. 
and they're just they're so accurate. And then what was so good is we started our custom shop. We brought Dan Hannes, um, who is in the Marine Corps at Quantico, and he came in when he retired and started our custom shop. So we had the guy that was building the Marine sniper rifles and the Marine shooting team rifles, brought him in to our shop. We did a lot of consulting with Ed Schillen early on hmm. and uh, got a good start with that. And now we have a production line of guns. We have our premier series of guns. We have our custom series. And, in fact, they've got a raffle going on at the Mule Deer Foundation because we support the Mule Deer Foundation and uh, give them one of those guns away. But they're, they're, they're accurate. This year we have the new Ridge, which is a, a, a very affordable type rifle. That's what I was going to say is that I know there's some people who think, oh, Bergara, I can't afford that. But you've got some very the price affordable. price point really yep. is very Absolutely. affordable. Got yeah, MSRP is low the, 800s. But the quality is is yep. just as phenomenal. And it starts with the barrels. We have the new Approach this year. We have the HMR Pro. Fantastic. And then another thing that's exciting is we started the Bergara Experience Academy up in Montana. Really? So up there at our place, you're going to have an opportunity to come shoot long-range courses. We have Bart Bartholomew, one of the instructors up there, who is Department of Defense and uh, also Baltimore SWAT team. Great resume. And it's going to teach people how to shoot long-range and enjoy that part of the aspect of the hunt also. And a beautiful part of the country, too. Uh, I yes. saw I saw the location in you you your catalog this year. Yeah, it it's, a, like it's, it's a beautiful, be beautiful lodge, and we do all the cooking and accommodations, and they get to shoot all they want. So it's just, it'll be a, it's going to be a phenomenal setup. That's excellent. Now, we are here at the Western Hunting Expo. Um, we're at the Mule Deer booth. You know, Chad, I know you're on the board of directors of Mule Deer. Tell us about your relationship with MDF, what you get out of it, how you were drawn to MDF, and... You know, what you hope to see moving forward with the organization. You know, there's a lot of great conservation organizations out there, and I, I'm very thankful for my wife who supports me because there is a time, uh, amount of time that uh, we invest into that. Uh, but for me, with the Mule Deer Foundation, I love what it stands for. It stands for habitat. It stands for relationships. I would say that there's some of the best volunteers in the country are the volunteers for the Mule Deer Foundation. And the leadership and direction there uh, with Miles and the crew is just bar none. Uh, it was just neat to see Secretary Zinke here uh, today uh, signing a bill. How cool is that right here at the Hunt Expo? But it shows that that's just not for this generation. This is for generations down the road. Possibly my grandchildren or great grandchildren if we're blessed with that and, and to see that. And I'm glad to be a part of the board um, that we can see the furtherance of mule deer, of habitat, and uh, for generations to come. So what you're referencing is Secretarial Order 3362, which was the big game corridors and, uh, and winter range uh, secretarial order that was signed at Western Hun Hunting and Conservation Expo. You guys live in the West, you know deer, you know the importance of corridors and winter range. Tell me what that secretarial order is going to mean for big game hunting in the West. To me, that, that is huge because unfortunately, Fortunately, we have encroached on a lot of mule deer habitat over the years. In fact, we were part of the mule deer relocation program. Marsha and I got to trap uh, mule deer, go in and help them uh, tag them and release them into other areas. The last couple of years we've been down here. That's the, the MDF, at the uh, MDF yeah, right, urban right. transplant program. Urban, right. and, and what I've learned from that is, man, all these deer are in people's neighborhoods and the, the fatalities with vehicles and that. And as hunters, we're the ultimate conservationists. And if we don't manage these herds and we don't, we're, we're their spokespeople. I mean, the deer can't, can't vote. They can't talk. We have to be their representative. And as conservations, we want good numbers of these animals and we, we want the, them to flourish. And so it's very important to have proper management, to have the predator control. But I think this uh, uh, the secretary ordered that, that he signed was so important because it gives that winter range area where these animals come out of the high country. They're at a very vulnerable state right then because they need feed. They can't get the feed and nutrition they need up high. So they've got to have a clear route where they can get into it without having the conflicts, without having uh, the different uh, vehicle uh, collisions and that. 
And so I think this is just a huge day for mule deer in America. It is, absolutely. So do you guys have anything coming up in the coming year that you guys are excited about? We have a lot of speaking dates coming up. Oh, excellent. We're really excited about that. We'll actually be speaking everywhere from California, Oregon, Washington, Ohio, Pennsylvania. So you can check out Shoot Straight TV. That's the name of our television show. So ShootStraightTV.com. It has all of our different locations for speaking. And we love doing that because it's just kind of sharing what we're passionate about with people in the outdoors. Sometimes we go into a really large city you know, where lots of things are happening all the time. And then there's other times where we really go into like a rural area yeah. where they don't have, you know, a hunting per se personnel or personality or somebody's on national television come in. And we've been in a town before that had 300 to 500 people and like 700 people showed up. So I don't know where they all <laughs> came from, but just, you know, telling hunting stories, listening to them tell their hunting stories, giving some education, some tips and techniques, the different new gear that's out there. Just kind of getting down on the level and just, you know, visiting with them about the, the great outdoors. So we're, we really enjoy doing that. We do that together with our boys. Um, both of our boys are excellent hunters and they're great game callers. So we, we do, you know, call in some wild, you know, call in some game and just have a lot of fun with it. We'll be doing that in Wyatt's High School Rodeo in this spring. Oh, so we'll be. He's a team roper. Team, team roper, roper and uh, very successful with that. So we'll be. Going down the trail on that, it's pretty cool, right? We've got an arena right on our property, and Mule there, I mean, he'll be they practicing right at them. night. They're <laughs> standing there watching the team roping. roping. Healing the mule deer. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. There you go. And Walker's doing the bird dogs with Big Sky Bird Dogs, and he trains labs. Labs, and, right? Yep, yep. Springers, okay. uh, Springer Spaniels, and then also some English Pointers. And uh, he's been having outfitters from the expo here shipping yeah. him dogs up and oh, been training great. them. And so – we, we just do it as a family and being out there, and uh, it's just it's fun. And I think that's so important for people is spend time. Get off the grid. Turn the cell phones off. Absolutely. Sometimes Talk we forget that kids. there's voicemail. It's yeah. okay, you know? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, the great thing about the rural states is we can sometimes ignore the phone calls and blame it on the cell phone. The coverage, right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, I know that, that hunting and conservation is better off when we have quality ambassadors, and we thank you for being great ambassadors for hunting for conservation for the mule deer foundation. for the mule deer foundation yeah. yes well it's an, a great honor and we love working with such a great organization thanks for all you do this is jody stemler from the western hunting and conservation expo i'm steve belinda until we talk to you next time thanks for talking mule deer with steve belinda and jody stemler the mule deer foundation is the only conservation group in north america dedicated to restoring improving and protecting mule deer and black-tailed deer and their habitat MDF is a strong voice for hunters in access, wildlife management, and conservation policy issues. To find out more, visit www.muledeer.org and stay tuned for the next episode of Talkin' Mule Deer.